another trip out to Fuerteventura. Uh, last time I went was Christmas, just before Christmas in 2021, where we had a very interesting but frustrating trip. Weather controlled as usual, uh, wind didn't allow us on some of the marks. And one of the things that really stood out about this trip this year was the wind was very kind and did actually let us on many marks. Uh, a bit of a shock coming from cold and wet to boiling hot. I had to have a ice cold beer to just put me in the frame of mind. Just the one mind because we were straight out onto rocks. So definitely not a place to be tipsy. Uh, Uber keen, we got straight on it. Um, couldn't believe our luck. We could fish the, the spots we really like to fish. And it did give us a little, little welcome. Um, I had a species I've not caught before. I had a pink dentex, which is a very, very beautiful fish. Um, big, big teeth in it. And what a lovely fin on it as well. That leading dorsal spine, so long, very beautiful. Um, and then the, we didn't get much else that day, that afternoon, but then we started first flight the next day and everyone caught fish actually. Um, there was myself there, Jason, Richard, all from the original tour. Another guy, Nick, who has fished out there over the last five years, a few, fair few times, so he understands how hard the rock can be. Um, it was kind enough to be a cracking couches bream that morning, uh, again on the Axia Mighty Minnow. In fact, all of the good fish that were caught were all on my rod and reel, um, either by myself or there, there's, there was one bonito caught towards the end of the trip called by Jason that was on my rod and reel while I was going to lunch. This is a trumpet fish, first time I've seen one. It's a relationship, relation to the pipe fish. What an amazing fish, absolutely stunningly beautiful. And he got followed by a big one later in the week as well. Always something exciting going on, even if the catching isn't very good. Lizard fish, they're, um, I'm glad they're there because they keep us busy when it's really hard. Bird life is amazing, just keep your eyes peeled. This one, very um, affected by tourists and tourist anglers, I suspect it was hanging around for scraps, which meant you could have selfies with it, Jason there, it's Jason with Heron. <laughs> um, other bird species, you see a lot that you don't see around here. Uh, ravens, for example, we don't get so many ravens in Brighton, uh, but there they are on the rubbish tips. Uh, striped squirrels, these are a squirrel alien from Morocco. Um, so again, non-native, but uh, adored by the tourists because they'll feed from the hand. First decent fish actually came on the bait to Jason and was the biggest bonito of the week. Um, one, biggest one of just three, in fact, two caught by Jason. Um, this one, a lot easier on the big rod to control. It has to be said, uh, I'd love to use 13 foot lure rods, but it's impractical because of the amount of casts you make. But when you're just casting and leaving it, a long rod has huge advantages. One being the sea caves that are a feature of this coast. Uh, they can't so easily get into it with a long rod. You can tease them out again without the line touching the ledge. With the shorter lure rods, that, that's one of the real issues of uh, how to lose fish out here. But Jason did a magnificent job and uh, very bravely, Richard uh, got in position to land it as well. Uh, I say very bravely because although it's calm, there's still a bit of swell, the weed's wet and slippery. Um, Jason's a non-swimmer, I'm a non-swimmer. Richard's a confident swimmer, so we was happy with that. <laughs> uh, if you're that worried, I would recommend you wear a life vest if you're on these marks, it could go wrong. Um, but then there's, you'll see in a minute, there's uh, guys go swimming in this area as well. Um, very important to get the fish into the landing zone and in this mark it's to the right of the knobbly bit um, what a fish battling away it was very difficult to get it right of the knobbly bit eventually though he managed it look look and round it goes with that long rod it was more possible to get it over to the right hand side of the knobbly bit the little uh, pointy peaky of the headland there um, but what a fish eh? you can see it flashing away the, these are Atlantic Bonita. They're actually a mackerel. People say tuna, but they're really not. They're uh, a mackerel. They're a fairly strong fleshed fish like most mackerel are. Uh, I like them. A lot of people say they're not good eating. Uh, I had a great time uh, with another friend on, on one of the early tours with a guy called Hiroshi. Um, and we sashimied and had with uh, wasabi and it was just amazing. This particular one we did give away to locals. They don't return very well once there's a trace of blood, like all mackerel, they, they don't return very well. So uh, it does make 
the locals very happy. And we thought, here we go. And then Fraggle Rock, Windy Rock, it did what it does. It shut down on us. We put in intense effort. We were getting up every morning uh, before daylight, uh, going out there, working, 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 working away. Always we had the pick of the marks, so we really thought we were going to do well. But you need everything right for the fish to come inshore there in numbers, and uh, everything right means the bait especially turning up. Lizards, they're always quite reliable. There's Nick landing a, a lizard fish, um, and a lot of fun. Um, they're a mouthful of teeth, but they're not so dangerous. Crabs there really don't want to go into the water for good reason. Um, so they hang around out of the water and they do like to warm up. So they come out of the cracks blue and they sit in the sun and go bright red as if they want to be cooked. <laughs> I don't know how I find that quite funny. Uh, you know when it's not so fishy though, you know, all the bird life and everything is not working. It's resting, it's looking actually all the time looking. This would quite amuse me because each time one looked in one direction, the other one did in sequence, which is quite amusing. Um, or maybe not, maybe I just see humour where it isn't. Again, just non stop, we were at it, at it, at it, at it. Beautiful sunrise, this huge sky there. Um, it was always nicer if there was a bit of cloud in the mornings, and then you really did get a very, very stunning sunset. A couple of locals there, they hoinked, um, there's a natural pool, just uh, rock pool, just on this mark and uh, they were lucky enough to find an octopus in there which is obviously local delicacy. Uh, this is a houndfish, another guy that we've met over the years, every year he's out there for two months, um, the Italian we call him, uh, or Senor Floatfish. Uh, this is a houndfish which is a, a, a giant garfish. This one wasn't particularly huge, I suppose about three or four pound, um, but it was good to see something there that was predatory. In fact, this year felt very, very different. We could see a lot of breams and things up the edges. And uh, talking to people, long time people here, um, when you see, when you've got the breams there and you've got the bait fish there and the mullet there, and this is a, a local guy fishing the bunch of hooks in the bread for the mullet, people s sneer at this technique and think, you know, they're wiping out the sea. But actually, this guy, for two hours' effort, caught not a single fish. Uh, that's how frustrating mullet are. They, you can see they're feeling like crazy, but no, he didn't hook a single one. Um, he loved it though, he loved his time there, and that's what fishing's all about. Um, glorious sunrises, like I say, every every sort of morning. On some days there was a promise of cool, coolness with some cloud bubbling up during the day, but uh, pretty much it always then just burnt away in, in the heat of the sun. So um, it was probably day four, or day five even. That's a uh, Portuguese man of war for anyone that's never seen them. They're not very big. Everyone thinks they're huge. This, they're, they're really not big, but they are quite nasty. And then suddenly all the bait turned up and uh, we were all quite fatigued by this point. We'd uh, had a beer as well a couple of nights previous, which wiped us out because we're all old now. Uh, and then suddenly I hit, hooked something that totally smoked me with a stiff drag. It just didn't, I didn't turn it on or anything. And then I hooked a fish, the very powerful fish, but I just felt a bit more in control of. And it was the first decent fish I landed. Um, notice there's a couple of German guys in the water there swimming. Uh, the irony of that is the only people we saw swimming all week. It's very dangerous to swim there because the tides and currents can change very quickly. Swells can pick up very quickly. There's warning signs all over it. There's blue, uh, there's Portuguese men of war in the water as well as other, other things that are nasty and stingy and bitey. And yet they're in there swimming. And I thought the irony, I'm going to lose this fish, it's going to go tearing over there and, and hit them. But this fish wanted to stay deep. Now I mentioned those sea caves uh, in, on this mark. This fish knew all about them. And my line is where you see it going straight down. It's actually going down and it's going into the sea caves. Uh, this fish, I, I knew it wasn't a Benito. I wouldn't sound familiar with it because it's only the second one I've ever caught, the first one being the same place last December or a different mark, but the same, you know, in Fuerte Ventura. Um, it turned out to be a white trevally, which is just amazing. They're very hard fighting fish, right on the limits of the what bass gear can do, because this is my N7099. The reels are Spinfisher V6, uh, Spinfisher 6. 
2500 size. The line is my absolute favorite, which for some weird reason Barclay have stopped making, 0 0.20 uh, nanofill. And that's the reason I landed this fish because my line is seesawing over that ledge and yet it held under pressure, which uh, eight strand, four strand, four strand, you got a better chance, eight strand, no chance, bang, it's gone, you, you lose it. This nanofill isn't braided, it's, it's filaments that run alongside each other, so it's uh, multi, many, many strands, um, and it does take it. And also on these rocks, actually, there is a bit of cushioning, there's very dense seaweed, almost like moss, uh, and that helps actually a lot as well. So now I've got it up. I made a desperate grab for the line there. That was a bit silly. Uh, and I also, in my, got to remember this is the first decent fish in like four or five days. I've done a schoolboy error. I've got it eventually to get it out of the sea cage. I've got it now on a very short line, which is a mistake. Um, however, I used, I realised it, but I used the occasion to keep its mouth out of the water, getting it sucking a bit of air, because now I knew the line would be very, very stressed for what had gone on. I don't want this fish fighting hard now. So quickest way to take the energy out of a fish is allow it to have a few gulpfuls of air. Then it can become much more docile and much easier to uh, deal with. And now I was in the lap of my friends. Uh, always good to have people there. Richard, the only swimmer amongst us, um, he went down and I couldn't get around. The swells and everything just wouldn't let it happen. I couldn't get around the other side, around the knobbly bit, onto the swell side. So we had to come up the steep side, and this was 50-50. We probably should have lost the fish at this point, but luck stayed with us. Uh, Richard did a great job of keeping the weight on the, on the ground. And that's that big smile because finally, um, you know, last one smoked me, whatever it was, wasn't one of these, wasn't a Bonito, something else, Amberjack maybe, Big Dentex maybe. Uh, but yeah, the white trevally, amazing. And just that one fish makes the whole trip worthwhile. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, and then blow me if 10 minutes later I wasn't in again. This one straight away I knew it was Bonito. Bonito do long, powerful runs. They go for depth also. Um, but they are turnable. Uh, yeah, it's um, <clears throat> quite a few of these now, and they're just brilliant. This is the reason we go for these fish. I'd say they fight differently to all the other fish. They're lovely, powerful runs, but they will tire. You, you, with patience, you can work them back. And then you've just got the same problem of uh, actually landing the fish and, and choosing the place. Um, again, I was lucky to have very good friends with me. Uh, Jason this time very bravely, because um, Richard was on the camera, uh, Jason very bravely as a non-swimmer, and I do feel for him, uh, the bravery bit, uh, he was the one that decided he was going to land this fish and um, got himself in position and did a great job of sliding it up. But not yet he didn't, because these fish go on and on and on, and uh, the N1799, power, quite a powerful rod, uh, just a pleasure compared to, for example, the the big beach rod, um, very, very different. This Benito is slightly smaller perhaps than, than Jason's fish that he caught earlier in the week. Um, but here it comes up now. Uh, what a fight, what a battle, and what a smile it left on my face and how shaking I was and all the adrenaline things that fishing should be about, they all came out, it was wonderful. <coughs> I had a good run with um, the river barbel the other week, getting me shaking and now Fraggle Rock giving up, uh, finally giving up some treasures onto the lure rod. Um, it was, the whole week was hard, but for, we know this, we're veterans of, of this place. Even Nick, uh, first time I fished with him, but he's been to Puerto Ventura. And actually, not everyone catches. Um, so Richard, so much effort he put into it. And apart from that lovely trumpet fish, just lizard fish. Nick, huge effort, uh, lizard fish. Uh, Sarah came out uh, on the Friday and she actually caught some beautiful things thanks to uh, Jason uh, uh, setting, uh, getting her going with the waggler rod and feeding bread and fishing bits of prawn and she got all the pretty fish including uh, parrotfish and what have you. Um, and then suddenly it was over, it was all over. The last day Richard and I really pushed it hard, nothing at all, couldn't sleep that night. <laughs> half past three the next morning I was back out hence that lovely uh, moonscape uh, but no I got smoked by one that last morning um, and actually the evening before hit a barracuda what I think was a barracuda briefly 
but then that was it. We was loaded up on the plane, uh, saying goodbye to the house. House was lovely. Thank you, Carol. I'll put details, uh, links to the property where we stayed in, in, in here. So she's keen to have uh, anglers, angling parties out there. Um, and the um, just amazed, still amazed that we get the weather that allowed us to fish wherever we wanted. Um, I suspect, as I say, this is a tour we started nine years ago. Uh, we sadly lost the most, one of the most important members in many respects because he was our cameraman and you wouldn't have all this shaky footage. Um, David Hall very sadly wasn't there. And the whole trip was a little bit in memorandum uh, for him. And although I'm not religious, I'm wondering if he wasn't looking after us. And if he was, can you do it again, Dave? Because I'm back on the 8th of December and it'd be lovely to have no wind then. Uh, that's a very different trip though. That's actually, although I don't bait fish, that is bait oriented. So yeah, very mixed emotions because we didn't have David out there. Um, there was moments where I felt quite sad to not, not have his tripod behind me, if you know what I mean. Um, we miss him terribly, but as do, of course, many people. Um, yeah, so we'll always think of him when we're out there. He's always in our thoughts. Um, and let's see what happens in December, which is a very different trip. It's uh, actually a wedding gift. I'll be working for a very special couple. Uh, and they just want a stingray, which should be done on day one. So let's see how that one goes. If you've enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. Try to get up to a thousand users so I can live stream on future foreign adventures, of which there will be many. Thanks for watching this one.